This is Julia Chandler, and I'll be sharing our work, Two-Stage Nipple Sparing Mastectomy Does Not Compromise Oncologic Safety. By way of background, a two-stage nipple sparing mastectomy is a procedure aimed at optimizing blood flow to the nipple areolar complex and central skin envelope of the breast. The first stage is defined as a devascularization of the nipple and a sub-nipple biopsy, in addition to lumpectomy and nodal staging procedure in those with known cancer. The second stage is a completion nipple sparing mastectomy with removal of the remaining breast tissue. Our prior work demonstrated decreased ischemic complications with two-stage nipple sparing mastectomy with no nipple loss when the time interval between the first and second stages was greater than 20 days. Here we address the oncologic safety of two-stage nipple sparing mastectomy by comparing the extent of residual disease at completion nipple sparing mastectomy to the histology found at the time of devascularization. For methods, chart review was performed for all patients who had undergone a two-stage nipple sparing mastectomy. Preoperative findings were compared to the presence of residual disease, defined as any invasive or in situ carcinoma at the time of completion nipple sparing mastectomy. We also analyzed prophylactic cases for incidental findings of carcinoma at the time of completion mastectomy. Exclusion criteria included patients who underwent chemotherapy and or radiation between stages and patients who delayed their treatment. For results, 153 breasts underwent two-stage nipple sparing mastectomy. 55 had a preoperative diagnosis of invasive carcinoma and 16 had a preoperative diagnosis of ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS. The remainder were prophylactic. The median time interval between stages ranged from 28 to 38 days and was similar between all groups, regardless of what the final pathology showed at the time of completion nipple sparing mastectomy. Comparison of the initial diagnosis to the final pathology showed that in the prophylactic group, there were three patients who were found to have occult DCIS or 3.7%. In those with a preoperative diagnosis of DCIS, eight or 50% were found to have residual DCIS and two or 12.5% were upstaged based on the presence of microinvasive disease. In those with a preoperative diagnosis of invasive disease, the majority 72.7% did not have any residual invasive disease at the time of completion mastectomy. In summary, most patients who began with invasive disease had the majority of their tumor removed during the devascularization procedure. A minority of patients with invasive disease or 27.3% had residual invasive disease on final pathology. Finally, no patients with invasive disease on initial pathology had an increased size of disease burden on final pathology. We conclude that the two-stage nipple sparing mastectomy procedure does not compromise oncologic safety.